the one thing that Davos, you might say, and the people come here stand up for is liberal democracy. So if the idea that that's going to be swept under the table is part of the idea, hopefully that's not what he means. What do you mean, what do you think he means by retribution? Well, it's laughable that you would, or anyone would describe Davos as protecting liberal democracy. With all due respect, nothing personal, but that's your part of the problem. Political elites tell the average people on three or four or five issues that the reality is X, when in fact reality is Y. That was Heritage Foundation President Kevin Roberts holding nothing back as he schools global elitists gathered in Davos about who the real threats to our freedoms are. Kevin Roberts joins us now with more of his message. Kevin, we were watching, Rachel and I both have the same question. Did they invite you? Did you crash the party? How did you end up there? <laughs> oh, man. I, they invited me. I, I never would have gone there on my own volition. And in fact, when the invitation arrived at Heritage, Pete, I told my staff, y'all are playing a joke on me. I've, I've not been invited <laughs> to the World Economic Forum. But I'm glad I went because just real, real quick point here, which I know you and Rachel not only agree with, but you really personify every time you're on TV, you know that the average person is really frustrated with what self-appointed elites tell us. And so it's a privilege. It's the greatest privilege of my life to go speak on their behalf. No doubt. So you were there uh, on, as part of a title, uh, a, a panel entitled What to Expect from a Possible Republican Administration. So is, were you almost there like, were you, were you meant to be kind of like a zoo animal for, for, the, for those at Davos? Like, who are these Republicans that might take power again? Yeah, that's how they looked at me, especially after the panel. You know, as you might imagine, there are only a couple people who came up and told me they agreed with me. Sure. In, in fact, it reminded me of when I was the one conservative Christian professor in the entire College of Arts and Sciences at a major university in the Southwest. So I guess to some extent, I've got I've had a lot of experience with that kind of thing. And, and I kind of relish it because when we get the opportunity, as you all know, to speak truth to power and to do it eyeball to eyeball, there is nothing more satisfying. Absolutely. And what was the feedback and response that you got when you said, hey, you global elites, you're out of touch. Here are the issues in America and why, you know, Republicans or conservatives respond to what Donald Trump's saying. Uh, what did they say? Well, in the audience, there, there were many audible gasps that, that, that I would deign to be there and say, that the best thing we can do is, is compile a list of everything that's ever been proposed in Davos and make sure that the next president oppose every single one of them. <laughs> but I will tell you, I, and it, you know, I'm dead serious about that, but I, I will tell you the, the, res, the reaction that was most troubling to me, and in fact, it's really concerning to me, is when I said that the Chinese Communist Party is the number one adversary, not just to the American but also to the free people around the world. There were people who looked like they were having a meltdown. And, and, wow. and Europeans, I mean, this tells you how successful the, the insidious efforts of the CCP have been. And, and look, if anything comes out of this experience last week in Davos, by what I said, by what my friend President Millet of Argentina said, it's confronting the Chinese Communist Party. In other words, that can be the litmus test. If, if we realize the West is rising up against this threat, then actually I think we can be relatively hopeful that we're going to reclaim this country. Yeah, do you think there's any self-awareness amongst these elites? So you have those that are gasping on the idea of the Communist Chinese, but when they look at their own internal problems, or they, uh, is there any, or is it just all climate change, all the time, all global control, we're, we're right, you're wrong, be quiet? It's, it's all climate change. It's all gender ideology. There were gasps about that point as well. And, and the real thing is it's all about they, those 2,800 attendees at Davos, keeping the power that they've concentrated in their hands and foisting on us like the peasants. And, and we're expected to salute. And so to sum up, I think they're unreformable. I mean, I, my faith tells me to, to, to be praying for them and hope that they come around. But ultimately, in terms of political power, like in the public square, we figuratively have to be wielding a two by four with these people and figuratively hitting them between the eyes because that's what they do to us every single day. If we do not Absolutely. in the political realm, Pete, understand that this is political warfare, I mean that figuratively, of course, we no are doubt. not playing the game. That they well, you like. went to the lion's den uh, and, and told the truth. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.